Hello Year 9, it's Miss Carew here, bringing you some information about GCSE history. So why is it important to study history? Our curriculum statement is that history is about critical thinking and empowerment of knowledge, giving you the power to be able to navigate the wider world. And the powerful knowledge that history gives us helps us understand the wider world. It helps us understand different cultures and different beliefs and to develop tolerance and acceptance for all of those in our world. And history also helps us to develop the ability to think critically. So to criticise, to dig deeper, to reflect, debate, discuss, analyse. When we look at the past and present, we need to use these skills. And the way that we do that is by generating lines of inquiry. And that means that we're questioning, we're creating a hypothesis, we're setting a statement and testing it to see how true those things are. And that helps us to form our own opinions. Because life is about navigating through information and history helps us to question and challenge what people say, what they write, what they publish. And it helps us to critically analyse opinion and fact check information, most importantly. History trains us to see through fake news and take part in society. This is what we mean by empowerment of knowledge. The skills that studying history gives you, helps you to be a much more critical, informed and tolerant citizen. So as you can see, there are many reasons to study history. Primarily, history is a facilitating subject. This means that the skills that you learn in history complement a huge amount of other subjects, other disciplines and a range of careers. It gives you cultural awareness. It helps you to learn from the mistakes of the past, but also the successes of the past. It gives students skills that are not confined just to the study of the past, that are transferable. These transferable skills are massively valuable in many jobs. Being able to analyse and prioritise information is vital to decision making, which you will have to do in most of the careers that exist. Studying history builds your independence as well. It gives you a skill set to be able to keep your career options open. Also, universities really like it. They really respect it. The study of history gives you a wide range of careers that facilitate general academic qualifications in addition to those that require specific historical knowledge. It's looked upon very, very favourably by Russell Group universities as well. So what careers are possible with a GCSE in history, or indeed when you go on to an A-level in history? There's a huge range, so working in the media, news, TV, broadcasting, any realm of the business world, research, law, the civil service, so working for the government, teaching, education, police, journalism, public relations, so working with people, getting them to work together, looking at advertising, companies like Amazon, Sony, all those sorts of things. Personnel management, so looking after people, making sure people are well in the workplace. Social work, looking after children, looking after adults in society. Politics, getting into politics, becoming an MP, looking at the political side of our country, the police, education, government intelligence, and so many more. All of these careers are possible because of the skills that you develop within this subject. And so many more. Remember, history is a facilitating subject. So it's the skills that you learn that makes you so valuable to employers. And you can use history to be a really niche history specialist, like the careers on the left. But the careers to the middle and the right are careers that can um, lead you to such a huge range of things. And it's the skills that you're learning of arguments, source analysis, problem solving, writing an essay, critical thinking, being analytical, research, all of those things can lead to a huge range of different jobs. Um, and this is just a small snippet of some of those that it can lead to. So at GCSE History, we follow the Edexcel exam board and we study four different topics. There are three exams though, so two of those topics happen in one exam session, if you like. So the first thing that you'll be looking at is medicine in Britain then early Elizabethan England, the American West, and Weimar and Nazi Germany. There are three exams, there is no coursework. All of these exams take place at the end of year 11. So we're going to start your September history journey with the thematic study, which means we're going to look at the theme of migration all 
the way from the year 800 AD to present day. And then we'll do a depth study of Notting Hill in 1948 to 1970. So do you want to learn more about the diverse history of Britain? Who came to Britain? Why? And how migration shaped Britain today? Well, in this unit, we aim to represent the diversity of British history through current and past events in Britain. Your study is going to include a massive range of things that we're going to look at, but here's a bit of a summary. So we'll start with the city of York under the Vikings, why the Vikings invaded during the Anglo-Saxon period and how that shaped that area of the north. We're going to look at the experience of the Huguenots, the Protestants that were fleeing from Catholic persecution in France, what was going on in Liverpool in the 19th century, including the migration of people from Ireland and why they came to Britain the experience of Jewish migrants in Victorian East End of London, but also Plymouth in the late 19th century. We're going to look at Bristol and Leicester in the mid 20th century, so 1950s onwards. We're going to look at the Notting Hill Caribbean Carnival and so much more. Then we move on to a depth study. So we move from a big time range to a really small one so we can really delve deeply into one particular topic. So if you love a bit of gossip and scandal, this is the unit for you. Um, in this topic, we look at the trials and tribulations that Queen Elizabeth I faced when she became queen. Her father, Henry VIII, was a tyrant, a womanizer. Her mother was accused of witchcraft, Anne Boleyn. Her brother was child king and her sister's nickname, her Bloody Mary, stuck forever. So we look at whether Elizabeth managed to avoid the scandal that surrounded the Tudors. Did she really deserve to be called Good Queen Bess? Was she really the Virgin Queen? Who was plotting against her? Who was spying on them? All will be revealed. Then when you get to year 11, we look at the American West. So it's another depth study, and we look at a small time period in America from 1835 to 1895. So we look at why it was called the Wild West. We discover what was so wild about the American West, who the cowboys were, how their behavior affected the, the Native American people. We look at whether America really was the land of hope and opportunity. Did everybody have a chance at the gold rush? Not really, only if you were a white Anglo-Saxon settler. So we then start to look at slavery and what caused the civil war in America and the hidden history of America. We look at the movement of European settlers across America and essentially how they tried to destroy the Native American tribal way of life and how a peaceful coexistence changed so dramatically, but most importantly, how the Native Americans fought back. So our final unit in year 11 is Weimar and Nazi Germany from 1918 to 1939, another depth study. This is a familiar one to most of you because we have been studying a Nazi Germany, ends of World War One, causes of World War II across year eight and year nine. And this is a chance for us to really go deeper into this topic. So if you've ever wondered how countries are led by terrible people, how evil can rise, how dictators end up getting into power, why is it that some governments thrive and some governments fail? Well, in this unit, we look into the political side of Weimar and Nazi Germany and really try and figure out how those power structures came to be. So we try and answer the questions like, how did World War I cause World War II? We look at why a democratic government just couldn't hold power in Germany after World War I. We look at why people needed a wheelbarrow to buy a loaf of bread. And why were people so scared of communism? And actually, did society allow this rise of evil to happen? Who fought back? When did they and how? So that's it. That's what you study at Coombe Dean for history. So really, why should you study history at Coombe Dean? We offer you loads of support. We have a really good understanding of the course and the exam. We give you recipe cards, which help you structure your answers tick lists, course booklets, structure strips to help you structure your answers. Marking and feedback is regular. We will give you one-to-one -one support when's needed. And we give you a love of history that we can pass on, hopefully, to you guys that you can then take with you into the future. 
So to study history at Coombe Dean, you do need to have an interest in the past. You need to like history. You need to have a questioning and inquiring mind. And you need to have a positive work ethic, a positive attitude to learning. There is a lot of essay writing in history. We're not going to lie to you. There is a lot of writing in this subject. We use peel paragraphs very regularly. You need to be able to reach a judgment and analyse sources. We use the three C's and three P's, just like what we do at Key Stage 3 at GCSE as well. You do need to be quite independent. You need to want to research, want to complete your homework. You need to be able to manage your time. GCSE history is a marathon, it's not a sprint. So cramming with facts and dates last minute for your exam will not suffice. That's not enough. You need to be keen to do the work well as we go along. You really do need to be a keen writer. If you struggle with writing but you love history, we will help you. If you absolutely do not like writing at all, it might be worth thinking about whether this is the right option for you. The exam paper is essay focused. There is writing in every single question. There are structure strips to help you build up that skill and we will help you get there if you are enthusiastic and you want to work hard. So this is an example of what an essay looks like in history. You have four exam papers, remember, and there will be a big essay question in every single one of them, as well as a range of few smaller question answers. So for an essay question, you would normally write approximately three to four complex peel paragraphs with an introduction and a conclusion. And then in the same paper, you will have an explain question, which will require two to three peel paragraphs, and then some describe and some source analysis questions. So we want to be really open with you guys about what the essays look like. This is a typical essay written by a history student. So that's it from me. If you would like any further information about this course, please let me know or you can speak with your history teacher. So go and see Mr. Turner or Miss Chapman. We are happy to have a conversation with you guys about your options, how we can help you and hopefully spread our love for this brilliant, amazing subject. Thank you so much for listening.